So, I guess about 15 years ago now, nature gave us a, a great gift, which is the discovery that the quark gluon plasma turns out to be a liquid. Um, and really since then, to me, there are two really important questions, and I, I'm a theoretical physicist and I work on both of them in different ways. One is, once you find a new form of matter, what are its phases? What's its phase diagram? What, how, how does this matter change as, in condensed matter physics, you would say as you dope it, um, which means in, in ordinary materials, it means adding an ex excess of electrons relative to holes or more holes than electrons. Well, we, it's the same for us. We want to dope the quark gluon plasma, which for us means adding more quarks than anti-quarks. And the way we do that is by looking at collisions with lower and lower and lower energies. And this is the RIC beam energy scan program, which is trying to explore the phase diagram of QCD and to look for a critical point in the phase diagram. And in terms of my recent work, my most recent work on this was with um, my student Jasmine Brewer, and my postdoc Yi Yin, and a colleague uh, Swagato Mukherjee. And um, we've answered the following question. So experiments at RIC are going to do collisions at this energy, and then this energy, and then this energy. And as they do, that's varying the doping. But what happens if the critical point in nature is at, a, is, is at a doping that's in between? The experimentalists do experiments here and here, but the critical point you're looking for is right in between. And we now have a really good answer to that question. Um, basically what Jasmine and, and I and, our, and Yi and, and Swagato showed is that if the critical point is between this energy and this energy, then if you look at how the observables change with rapidity, it'll be opposite for these energies and for these energies. So by looking at the rapidity dependence, you can tell if you went from one side of a critical point to the other. And this is great because the star detector is, is, is just being upgraded to allow it to extend its reach in rapidity, which means it will be perfectly suited to make this measurement in the coming couple of years. So this is a, 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 a small piece of theoretical physics, but it really, I think, has the potential to be very important given the capabilities that STAR is, is developing for the coming beam energy scan. So that's sort of half the answer, okay? Nature has given us this great surprise 15 years ago that the early universe was filled with a liquid, trillion degree hot liquid, and you want to study its, 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 uh, its phases, its phase diagram. The other half is, okay, how's this liquid put together? You know, how, what's its microscopic structure? How can it be that quarks and gluons, which are particles, um, and if you, if you look at this liquid with a a powerful enough microscope, you should see the individual quarks and gluons in it. How do they conspire to arrange themselves into a liquid? So we need that microscope, and the best microscope we have right now, and probably the best we'll ever have, is jets. So the other half of my work has to do with understanding how jets can see the structure of quark gluon plasma. And I've been doing this in a whole variety of ways with different collaborators, um, understanding how jets interact with the plasma, how they perturb the liquid, how their energy is degraded by the liquid. We're doing pretty well with that, I would say, um, in a variety of different ways. Some of them involve techniques we borrow from string theory. Some of them involve techniques that are more, uh, much more standard and, and based more directly on quantum field theory. But in the longer term, sort of on the five-year time scale, I think the really interesting questions in jet physics will come by looking at very rare processes where a parton in a jet scatters by a large angle and tells you about a quark or a gluon inside the soup. And that's what I hope gonna teach us how the quarks and gluons conspire to form this liquid that we've now known for 15 years was the stuff that filled the microsecond old universe.